guys, it's Jasmine here. So, um, I'm recording this video because I want to um, sort of tell the story of GI symptoms and Parkinson's disease. Um, because uh, having gastroparesis, which is complete paralysis of the stomach, and partial intestinal paralysis has just turned my world completely upside down. Um, and the most frustrating thing ever is that um, quite a few people I've talked to with Parkinson's since I've been more vocal about um, my gastroparesis symptoms and, you know, I sort of shared my journey with the community. Um, and so many people have messaged me and have said they have symptoms that are classic of mild to moderate GP, um, gastroparesis being GP. Um, um, I have give very severe gastroparesis, but, you know, it didn't get there overnight for a while. I had moderate to, uh, mild to moderate gastroparesis, um, and my neurologist didn't do anything because they really just did not know about it. And so my goal here really, um, one of the goals that I really have right now, um, going forward with my life is really just to educate, um, both neurologists and patients about the, um, gastrointestinal symptoms of Parkinson's because it's a very severe, um, and serious comorbidity. Um, and that's just, it's not, it's not right that neurologists and people don't know about it because, you know, if, if I had known about it and had gotten help, I mean, I probably would have ended up this bad eventually, but I could have potentially lasted a lot longer um, actually being able to eat. Um, and I could have probably prevented myself, maybe gotten a tube earlier, so that I didn't have to get to the point where I was practically on my deathbed when I got the tube. So, um, going back to my Parkinson's, um, so I've had it since I was 14. Um, and then I was diagnosed with dopa responsive dystonia, which was my first diagnosis at 18, based on my response to a medicine called Cinemet, which is something called levodopa. So levodopa is the precursor to dopamine. Um, and so you take that and it gets taken up into your brain and converted to dopamine. And so it's a dopamine replacement. Um, sort of in the beginning of research in Parkinson's, one of the things they really thought was that it was just a dopamine problem and that was sort of all that could go wrong with Parkinson's, and so if you just replace dopamine, people would be fine. Um, the problem with that is that the brain is so much more complicated, and we've learned, uh, especially in recent years, that there's just more and more to Parkinson's, and we're still discovering more to Parkinson's than anyone ever thought was originally possible. Um, and so GI symptoms, so many neurologists, I think, don't really understand um, that it can be it can totally mess you up with Parkinson's, um, and that it can be severe. 25% um, is the estimated number that um, people with Parkinson's who have um, something called autonomic dysfunction. So your autonomic nervous system is something that um, that controls non-voluntary um, responses in your body. So changes in blood pressure, um, changes in heart rate. And so quite a few people with Parkinson's, myself included, although I've gotten that very much under control lately, is something called orthostatic hypotension, um, which is when you stand, orthostatic hypotension and tachycardia rather, which is where you stand up and your blood pressure plummets and your heart rate soars. And so some people, I mean, you know, myself included, this has happened to me when my orthostatic hypotension and tachycardia was not under control. Um, I would stand up from laying down and I would just pass out because my blood pressure would go from, like, I mean, I always have low blood pressure. It would go from, like, you know, being, like, 100 over 50 or 90 over 50 to just being, like, 70 over, over 30. And it would just, it would fall and I would, you know, lose consciousness. My heart rate would soar from, like, 90 to 100 to 160, um, which is really dangerous. And so they even had me on heart monitors and everything, but nothing was actually wrong with my heart. It was just that my nervous system was completely misfiring. Um, so the thing with uh, gastroparesis is gastroparesis falls under something called dysautonomia, um, autonomic dysfunction. Um, so it is my belief that the 25% number that, um, that the neurologists have described of people with Parkinson's who have autonomic dysfunction is pretty low. Um, pretty grossly low, and I think that's just because it's not as known in the neurological community as something that can happen, um, and I think it's underreported, because I was explaining these symptoms to my my neurologists, um, and they're, and I, ha I had some really great neurologists, but their, their instinct was, go see a heart doctor, go see your general physician, so actually, I went to my general physician, and I was telling him what happened, and he did the orthostatic test, and he said, yo, classic orthostatic hypotension, um, and I knew that had to come from my Parkinson's, because where else would that come from? Um, and also it was definitely tied to some of the medicines I was taking. Um, I was on a medicine called amantadine, which actually, for most people, amantadine doesn't have that many side effects, but I think I just had a really bad reaction to it, because as soon as I stopped amantadine, my blood pressure got much more under control. 
Um, and I mean, it's still low. It still runs chronically low <laughs> in the hospital. I always say like, don't bother me unless it's under 70 because I'm okay in the 80s and 90s as my systolic. Um, and so, so, so I do think that there are much more, many more people with Parkinson's who have both dysautonomia and have gastroparesis, um, especially with how many people have messaged me just saying things like, you know, I'm having a really hard time eating, um, which is a hallmark of gastroparesis. Like, I'm not hungry very often. Um, you know, I feel bloated when I eat more than a couple bites. And that's so, that's just, that's classic of gastroparesis. So my gastroparesis journey, um, it really did start when I was about 18 years old. Um, so pretty shortly after my diagnosis in October, I had just turned 18 in October. Um, and I was a freshman in college. I was a chemistry major. Um, and I was really just having a good time. I was enjoying my life. Um, you know, I was dealing with my pretty severe disability at that point. Um, before my diagnosis, you know, I went to college a little before my diagnosis and I was really sick. I was probably about a year away from being completely dependent on a wheelchair. Um, my ankle was twisted at 80 degrees. Things were bad, but Cinemet, um, really did help. And it really did bring me back, um, and gave me a lot more motor function. Um, but so I started noticing really that I just was not hungry. And I think that was my first symptom around 18. I was just not hungry anymore. So I could go all day. I mean, I was a really busy person. I was taking like, you know, 18 credits with lab classes and I was running around campus. Um, and so a lot of times what happened is I'd get home at like six or seven o'clock at night. And I think to myself and I'd be like, I've, I've only had a smoothie today. Um, that's not good. I should probably go eat something. So, you know, I go to the commons and I'd try to force myself to eat something. I'd get another smoothie because a lot of times liquids were better for me. Um, I wouldn't fill up as fast. And so I really did think that was a side effect of my medication at first. Um, and so I just kind of dealt with it. It wasn't so bad at that point. It's like really what happened was I had to remember how to, like, when to eat. You know, you think a lot of times you're, you're sitting there and it's like, it's like noon and you're like, oh, you know, you feel that stomach growl and you're like, oh, okay, I'm hungry. I should go get food. But when you don't have that, that response, you just don't think about food. And so I found myself, um, having to like schedule in my day, like go eat lunch, go eat dinner, um, eat breakfast. Otherwise I just wouldn't. Um, and so actually <laughs> this is the terrible thing. Um, I kind of enjoyed it for a while because, you know, you want to be, especially with there's so much pressure, especially here in Los Angeles, um, this pressure to be skinny. I um, mean, I was always a pretty thin girl. I'm tall. I'm five foot eight. Um, and I was healthy um, when I was healthy in uh, my freshman year of college. I weighed about 125, 130, uh, which from my height is sort of at the bottom end of normal. Um, but that was healthy for me. I mean, if I had gotten, if I had gained any more weight with my bo my bone structure, I probably would have been a little bit on the bigger side because I just have narrow, narrow, pretty narrow bone structure. But I was feeling really good. Um, I was healthy. I could fit into women's clothing, which oh my god, I so miss. <laughs> but you know, I was I was comfortable, um, and it was actually kind of terrible because I was kind of losing a little bit of weight sometimes. Um, but then I gain it back because when I you know would actually be able to eat plus you know college food, <laughs> but. Um, so I was, I, you know, for a while there, it was really sad because I was thinking to myself, like, this is kind of nice. I mean, you know, I don't have to eat as much as everybody else and I'll lose weight, which I think is really terrible because as my gastroparesis got severe later on, I mean, that just goes to show you how, how messed up society is. Um, cause my gastroparesis got really severe going forward. Um, the thing that was really hard for me was that, um, uh, people would say, like, oh, like, what's your secret? You're looking so great. And I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, at 105 pounds, um, absolutely miserable because I have no energy because I haven't eaten much at all because I just could not take in food, you know, ribs protruding, spine showing. And it was like, I have a terminal illness. I'm not your inspiration. So that was, that was definitely something that was really eye-opening for me later on. But um, moving forward with my whole gastroparesis journey, um, it didn't really get bad until I was 20. So when I was 20 years old, um, like once again, just a couple weeks after my birthday um, in October, I developed a side effect to my medicine called dyskinesia, which is just, it was this really bad side effect. It was like your, bo your body flails because you're taking too much cinnamon. Um, so I lowered cinnamon and then I couldn't walk because my cinnamon was lowered. Um, and then I up cinnamon again and started the amantadine. Um, which caused my orthostatic hypotension. So, um, you know, I was like, okay, now I can walk again. I don't have the dyskinesia, but now I have orthostatic hypotension. So it's just like you choose between not being able to move, moving way too much and flailing, or passing out every time you stand up. There was no good option. And so after a couple months of that, that 
<laughs> rather hellish experience. Um, what happened was we decided to um, start me on, um, or to start looking into deep brain stimulation surgery, which I had in June of 2015. I had the first side of my brain surgery done, um, and that fixed the left side of my body, which was the worst side, and it was absolutely freeing. I have more videos on this channel if you're curious as to what DBS does. Um, then the next thing that happened to me was um, I had uh, the second half of DBS, um, and the second half I had DBS I had in December of 2015. Um, I was 21. And so what happened was, um, after, but before the D, before my first DBS in June, I, my gastroparesis was really flaring. Um, and it was just really hard for me to eat literally anything. I was just, I was barely struggling. I had dropped from like 125 to 130 to 105 pounds. Um, you know, I was, um, was wearing uh, I bought shorts from the children's section in a children's size 12. I was so, so thin. Um, when I, after I had surgery, I was laying, you know, in pain on the bed and my ribs were just digging into the hospital bed. And I asked them, I was like, please inflate the mattress. Cause you know, they can do that in the hospital. And so they actually inflated the mattress to make me more comfortable. Um, and so what happened was, um, one of the things that, um, you know, and I had brought this up to my neurologist and they just sort of didn't really think anything of it. You know, just told me to drink some Ensure, which is what I did. And it was just not really working. Um, and then things kind of got better after my DBS, actually. I was able to eat a little bit more. I went from, you know, barely eating a meal a day to eating like one to two meals a day. So I was not really gaining any, well, I gained a little bit of weight. I'd gained about 10 pounds. So it was about 115, which is still way too thin for my height. But, um, you know, I was feeling a lot better. Um, and then things just kind of deteriorated again around September, August, September, I stopped being able to eat food again. Um, and then speed, you know, fast forward to, I was, I was in my senior year of college. I was, you know, and I mean, I, I sort of barely trudged along the year, but I did it. Um, but, uh, so what happened was I, um, it was, it was Thanksgiving break in November and I hadn't eaten in like four days. I was feeling awful. Um, and it had been so hard. I hadn't gone to my classes because I was just, I was just miserable. I had zero energy. Um, and I, 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 it was the th day before Thanksgiving and I looked at my dad and I said, we really need to go to the hospital. They have to do something. Um, and so it was like, it was like four o'clock the day before Thanksgiving and we went to urgent care. Um, and I met this doctor at urgent care who said, you know, like the problem is GI has gone home for the day, but, um, you know, let me call them and see what they say. And so he, she calls a GI doc and, um, the GI doc says, come in tomorrow morning as early as you can, like four or 5 AM on Thanksgiving day, because the GI docs are in the hospital and they're on rounds. And so what will happen is your emergency physician will call GI for a consult and they'll just happen to be around and so they'll actually get in to see you so you can see someone ASAP. Um, so, you know, that doctor could tell that I was just in really bad shape you know, I was, I was barely hanging on and I was, you know, barely 105 pounds and things were just really bad. And so what happens was we did that. I got up at four in the morning and we drove to the hospital. Um, they get me checked in. So in around eight or nine, they, you know, they put me in on fluids, um, and they did some labs and my labs were all borderline. They were still in the normal range, but you know, they were showing that I was declining into malnutrition, but I wasn't quite there yet. And so the physician actually wanted to discharge me. He said, well, you know, you can call GI, and, you know, next week and set up a diet, like, you know, so you could talk about a diet plan. And I was kind of like, there is no diet. Like, I, I, I cannot eat food. Like, are you crazy? Um, and so, you know, we finally get him to just, just call. And he said, well, the GI doesn't have to come. You know, it would be a courtesy call. And I was like, well, please just ask, you know, you never know. And so he finally does ask. And he said, GI is actually going to come. And it was actually the same GI that um, the physician, yes, the day before had talked to on the phone. And so he, he, you know, he knew, and he said, he said, when, you know, when he comes in and he says, okay, given that you have Parkinson's, um, and with these symptoms, I know it's gastroparesis. We don't even need to do tests. It's obvious that it's gastroparesis. Um, and so he says, I want to put a GJ tube in. Um, and so what a GJ tube is, is that you have, um, a G port, which goes into your stomach. Um, and then you've got a J tube inside the G port, which is kind of like a tube within a tube. And so the G tube just goes straight into your stomach. There's no extra thing. Um, and then the J tube is, mine is about 90 centimeters long, um, because of my height and my partial intestinal paralysis with it. It has to be longer. Otherwise it'll keep coming back up. It actually did come back up into my stomach, which was about the worst feeling ever. So it goes into your intestine, into a part of your intestine called the jejunum. And so the jejunum is the second part of your intestine. First there's duodenum and then there's the jejunum. 
Um, and so that's the part of your body that absorbs nutrients. It's the part of your body that, you know, can absorb medicine and break down. Mo most medicines um, are broken down in the jejunum and absorbed into your body. And so that's where um, my tube goes. And my tube is just my lifeline. I, I don't even drink water anymore. Water makes me throw up. Um, and so I get water and food and medicine. I crush up my medicine, put it through the J tube. Um, and that really saved my life. Um, I had that done the next week. And so, you know, he said for this next week, just hang in there. Just, you know, um, if you have to come in to get fluids, come in to get fluids, but just try to drink water as much as you can and try to drink, um, like, you know, insures. And so that's what I did. I just, I tried and I ate a lot of mashed potatoes and I just tried to hold down food and I tried to, I just tried to keep it down and not throw up anything um, to be able to tolerate food, but it was, it was a really hard week. Um, he said he, my, my GI is amazing. He was just like, I would do it right now if I had an anesthesiologist, but I need two, and I need to, or, and, uh, no, he had an anesthesiologist, another doctor. He needed another doctor. Um, he said it's a two person procedure. He's just like, if there was another guy here, I would do it now. So I know that my, my doctor is just incredible. Um, and he's, he's been so helpful for this entire thing. Um, so sort of fast forwarding, um, to getting the J tube. So I had the J tube put in on December 2nd, 2015, literally two weeks before I had my second deep brain stimulation surgery. Um, and once <laughs> that was actually kind of a mess because there was like some hospital errors and food basically didn't get delivered until Friday night and home health didn't come till Thursday or, or I mean till Saturday. So from Wednesday to Saturday, I was just sort of like laying in my bed at home, like <laughs> I'm in pain and I don't have food. And why did they do this? You know, it's hard because you didn't see that result. Because, um, you know, I was just like, I'm in so much pain from the surgery where they literally cut open my stomach, but they didn't, you know, do anything, so I don't have food yet. So when home health finally comes, and the home health nurse is amazing, and she helps me get my pump set up, immediately, immediately, I feel, I feel much better and more alive, even though I've only had, it's only been like 300 calories, but like, having that going into your body just, it made a huge difference. So, you know, over the next couple months, um, you know, it's now, it's now May, so it's been you know, five months since I got the tube, um, but it's, it's been, it's been interesting, um, I've had a lot of problems with it, just because it's not the tube, it's my body, um, because my intestines are partially paralyzed, you know, I had the tube come back up into, um, into the, into my stomach, which was awful, so they had to do surgery to put it back in, and they didn't have an anesthesiologist, so it was under twilight, and it was just awful, um, and then I also had my body reject my feeding tube formula, um, because there's too much protein in my body, which is not able to absorb all that. Um, and so that was an awful, like, nine days in the hospital, um, where I ended up on IV nutrition. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been interesting, but, and it's been really rough, but I'm alive. And right now, sort of my mission is really to, to be able to educate people, um, with Parkinson's, um, and neurologists about the fact that these GI symptoms are not just a random thing. And if you're, patient has GI symptoms, please send them to GI and work with them. Um, and if you're a patient and you're having these GI symptoms, go to GI, go get on the gastroparesis diet, which is one that's like, you know, more friendly to it. So you can maintain weight so you don't lose this weight. Um, and so that you're not throwing up all the time like I was too. Um, but yeah, I mean, gastroparesis is just a, with this level of severity, it is really just a terrible illness. I mean, I did mention before it is a terminal illness for me. Um, we do know this is how I'm going to die. Um, and so I, um, I mean, I even, with my G, my G tube, um, just to keep myself from throwing up because at this point, um, bile backs up into my stomach because my stomach just cannot push it out. Um, your bile's made, you know, the first part of your small intestine, the duodenum. Um, and so what happens, um, is I actually have to drain my G tube with a suction machine, um, multiple times a day just to keep myself from throwing up. Um, and I will totally spare you the canister full of 700 milliliters of bile from my stomach. Um, that was just in 24, uh, past 24 hours alone. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really rough. Um, but I mean, it's, it's something that has become sort of a mission for me to, to educate people that Parkinson's one can destroy your vagus nerve, which is what controls all this. And two has a lot more symptoms than just the motor symptoms. Um, because I believe that increasing awareness for this will really make a huge difference in a lot of people with Parkinson's, um, a lot of their lives, because just if you, if you know about it and you can get treatments early, it would just make a huge difference. Um, I mean, if there's one thing that I could change about my life, it would be to have known about gastroparesis when I was still just having low appetite.
Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that this was helpful and informative in some way. Bye.